And the evolution theory is one of the dumbest and most dangerous ideas in the history of the world. It didn't happen. Okay? What a dumb idea. We all came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. Hey, that's what they believe. Okay, I respect their right to believe that. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's, uh, they're going to be real, they're going to feel real dumb for all of eternity, you know, if I'm getting fooled for something like that. But hey, that's okay. You can believe what you want. But I do, I don't mind if they believe that. I do resent, though, uh, them using my tax dollars to pay for that religion to be taught in the textbook. Now, that we do resent. Let me share a few testimonies and give a few announcements here. Then we'll get it started here, get some of the housekeeping done. Uh, the uh, Creation Seminar Conference, we have a Southeast Creation Seminar coming up uh, this uh, September 17, 18, 19. You ought to come to that, Pensacola, Florida. It's our first, first ever and hopefully first annual Southeast Creation Conference. We're going to have Dr. Carl Baugh come, my good friend from Glen Rose, Texas, who's on uh, TBN every week with his uh, program, uh, Creation in the 21st Century and lives right in Glen Rose, Texas, where the uh, footprints are found. Been doing research for a long time on the creation evolution topic. We're also going to have uh, uh, Jack Colazzo come, who is an expert on the Neanderthals and the hopes about the Neanderthals being the missing one. And we'll have uh, Dennis Swift, one of the world's experts on the Inca stones, and talk about the crew dinosaurs and humans together on the same stone. So if you want to join us for the conference, you can call into our office here in Pensacola. It's uh, 850-479-9080, 850-479-3466. And you can be on the program today. It should be phone lines and everything else working. Uh, Lord willing, it will all work fine. That will come from the last couple of times. But call in and be on the program. Or go to our website, drdino.com, D-R-D-I-N-O.com, where we will... Uh, you can go to the Creation Science Hour link on the front page and get to us that way. Let me read a few testimonies that uh, Rita, my secretary, who does nothing but email all day long, uh, and still can't keep up sometimes. So if you email us, I apologize, folks. It just, it's a blizzard here of email. So we do get to it eventually. Just hang in there. It's much quicker to call. We need us to just call on the phone. We take phone calls all day long, too. Here's a testimony from Tim Watts, who writes in. I just want to say thank you for your ministry. Your scientific knowledge is astounding. My dad has been making a lot of tapes, and people are now seeing the light. The light of the world, that is. The church I attend, First Baptist Orange City, Florida, has a targeted discipleship ministry going, and I'm trying to get your videos shown. Because too many Christians believe God created us through evolution, and that's wrong. It discredits all we believe. I agree, Tim. I agree. He said, I want to thank you, and I'll keep uh, praying for you, everyone, invo everyone involved in the ministry, with love, Tim Watts. Okay, here's uh, Morgan, F-O-A-R-D, Ford, I guess you pronounce that. Let me turn Eric's speaker down here. I still hear him coming across. Eric, uh, Morgan Ford writes in, Hello, Dr. Hovind, my name is Morgan. <coughs> I recently attended a private Bible study with my girlfriend uh, where they're showing your videotapes, your tape series. I've had many problems fitting into any religion because nobody ever seems to have my answers. When I watched your tapes, they answered more than I thought possible. But there are still so many questions left to ask. I just want to thank you and possibly get more information about your studies, your seminar, and so forth. Maybe I can learn more than I thought I could. Much of what you say could help the world's understanding if it was mainstream information. Maybe sometime I can attend your seminar and learn more about dinosaurs and lies in the textbook. Please send me information about your studies. Uh, we did that. Uh, send them a catalog. I believe you get one of those free of charge or go to the website, Dr. Dino. Dot com, where we've got a ton of information on there. It says, uh, I would be greatly appreciative. One more thing, I heard a news story about earthquakes were found in a small canyon, in, in the Grand Canyon, in small amounts. And they believe that maybe being an earthquake fault was one of the factors of the canyon's creation. Just thought any information was helpful. Hmm. Interesting, Morgan, thank you. There's no question the Colorado River did not form the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, uh, the top of Grand Canyon is higher than both ends. Okay, the rivers don't flow uphill, no river flows uphill. So the Grand Canyon had to be is a washed-out spillway at minimum and possibly a, a fault uh, with a, a, from an earthquake. I've heard that uh, for years. It's been tossed around. Here's one from Mark Roman, who writes, In October, just a letter thanking you for the great information your ministry provides. I'm a Navy medical officer 
currently deployed in Africa for six months. I will return to my home and base in Jacksonville, Florida sometime in March. I, too, have the desire to teach creation science as a ministry. I've been studying and researching for the past three years. Hopefully, I can start soon. I was retiring from the Navy in 18 months. I was teaching creation in a home Bible study group and leading, I was leading before I was deployed to Africa. I attend the Vineyard Christian Fellowship in Jacksonville. I have your entire teaching and debate series on DVD with me here in Africa, and I study them daily. Thank God for laptops. Amen. I agree. Uh, <laughs> Mark, be lost without mine. Let's see. Along with the great creation science ministries uh, resources on the Internet, I look forward to seeing you in April in Jacksonville at Trinity Baptist College. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Mark. Well, thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. We get thousands and thousands of testimonies. Folks, our ministry exists to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. If you're a believer, we want to help strengthen that faith. Number two, if you're not saved, we want to get you saved. That's why we're doing this. Number three, if you're saved and you're not doing much for the Lord, then we want to make you uncomfortable. That's the goal we have in mind. Okay, let me go to some of the anti hovind websites. We've been trying to answer some of the critics out there. It's been years. I just basically have ignored them. i got too much to do. But we thought we'd take a week or so and go through some of them. Then if we get time, we have the radio questions folder that keeps getting thicker and thicker. People send in radio questions. If you have an AOL instant message you want to send us, you can do that. Go to our website or go to, uh, I got it right in front of me, Jonathan. Let's see, Dr. Dino Live. Uh, screen name, Dr. Dino Live. Okay. Uh, and you can get to us there. Uh, they give me all these cue notes right under the camera. Uh, no, that's not it. Oh, the 2003 seminars are online. A little grainy, but they're there. And we're, we're fixing that? Putting less grainy? Okay. We're down, grain, down graining them. Down graining them. Okay. Whatever you call that. Good. <clears throat> Here we have, uh, I've been answering a couple of the anti hovind websites. And if you type in Kent Hovind, you'll find, oh, man, there are a lot of anti hovind websites here. This is one that comes up a lot. I've got several things in my uh, hand here to try to answer here. About the, uh, here's 2001 by Dave Thomas. Is Dave Thomas the one with the New Mexicans? New Mexicans for Science and Reason. He's the one that they're claiming I, I refuse to debate, isn't it? Yes. Yes, okay, that's on this other one. Dr. Hovind refuses to debate. Here it is. Well, I'll start with this one. Um, this is uh, critics. What's this one from, Jonathan? This, you got all these printed off of one of these on one page. These are from uh, just a variety of... Websites, common. Okay. Uh, does Dr. Oven have a Ph.D.? <coughs> Here's a question. Well, I would answer that the last broadcast. Yes, I do. A doctorate in philosophy and uh, got it from Patriot University. They no longer offer a Ph.D. And they only have three graduates a year in the Ph.D. program when they had it. Of course, many programs only have one graduate a year, one graduate a decade in a doctor program. It's not a big deal. And it's from a non-accredited school. So Jonathan searched non-accredited colleges and universities. Where did you find this on the Internet, Jonathan? Uh, what? Michigan.gov. Michigan.gov has a list. I just, <clears throat> there's over 50 to a page, so there's about 600 uh, universities and colleges on this list that are unaccredited. <clears throat> Accredited simply means somebody recognizes you for whatever reason. Uh, and obviously, you can take a look at the people I've debated at, um, debates at, on evolution. Just because you get a degree from an accredited school still doesn't mean you know anything. Uh, <laughs> obviously, anybody who believes they came from a rock certainly needs some help. So here's a Michigan.gov, about 600 uh, universities, colleges around the country that are not accredited. Patriot University. Is they, are they on the list, Jonathan? Did you find them? No, it's not. This is just some of them. Okay. There are hundreds and hundreds of non-accredited schools. So, yes, I agree. I've always said Patriot's not accredited. If that bothers you, don't call me doctor. Call me Bubba. Call me Kent. Call me Hey You. And let's get back to the topic of creation evolution. But I worked pretty hard for my degree. I uh, make work nine years on it. And I uh, think I, yeah, we can do that. Uh, put that on there, John. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> here's the uh, next article. Dr. Hovind refuses to debate the New Mexicans for science and reason. NMSR.org. And I quote from Dave Thomas, who has another one here, Dave Thomas. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Well-known creation scientist Kent Hovind touts his unsatisfied quarter-million-dollar challenge to anyone who can prove evolution as evidence for creationism. Uh, Dave, you got it wrong already. I don't offer evidence for those who can prove evolution as evidence for creationism. Uh, that's not what the offer says. You need to read that again. Anyway, the challenge is rigged, of course. 
For example, since the Big Bang is part of evolution, Hovind argues you'll have to produce an actual Big Bang to get the award. Hovind also touts uh, tours the country preaching creationism to large crowd. Let me stop right here and say, Dave, you need to change this. It's creation, okay? The ism, the ISM, goes on evolution. It's ev evolutionism, not creationism. And many people, uh, creationists even fall for this. They, they allow the evolutionists to say it's evolution versus creationism. There you go. Eric, thanks for joining us. Unplugged your line because your speaker was still on. I didn't know how to shut the thing off. So, I'm smarter than the computer. Well, I hit all the down buttons on there, and it didn't do it. No. And I was busy since I was on the air. It was making noise. So you figure out what to do with that up there, okay? After you shut the sound off. Okay. Uh, so Dave writes and says uh, it's uh, creationism, and Dave, you got that wrong. It's creation, and it's evolutionism, like communism, Marxism, socialism, Nazism, evolutionism. They all kind of fit in the same category. Put the ism on the evolution. You do that when you speak here? Can do that. That's fine, isn't it? Evolutionism. Okay. Um, Hoban argues you have to produce an actual Big Bang to get the award. Uh, let's see. Hoban is constantly challenging evolutionists to debate at these evangelism sessions. Ken Hoban has been challenged to a real debate, capital R-E-A-L, a scientific debate in the pages of this newsletter on the World Wide Web. Well, Dave, I don't know that your newsletter is uh, a real scientific uh, forum, or this would be a real scientific debate, but I'll tell you what, just for you, Dave, I will fly to New Mexico at my expense. Won't, you won't, won't cost you a dime. I'll even pay you 200 bucks if you'll debate me in front of any university in New Mexico. Uh, you just let me know when and where, and I'll, I'll make a hold on the schedule, and we'll find a way to get there if possible. It has to be midweek, probably, because my weekends are booked for about the next four billion years. Uh, but uh, come as quick as I can. So, Dave, I don't have time for an email debate, and nor interest, in, but I've open, uh, always I've been open for any uh, debate on the creation evolution topic in front of any university where it can help the students. So I've not refused to debate. I've consistently refused to debate an email debate, but if open, public challenge, never have I refused one of those that I know of um, on the creation evolution topic. Uh, if somebody wants to debate me on, you know, the merits of underwater basket weaving, uh, I wouldn't debate on that because I don't know how to do that. All right. So this is uh, not correct, Dave. I take this page down about the refusing to debate. You're misleading people here at best. Uh, and then Dave also has the anti, is this from Dave also, the anti-evolution? Yeah, I think it all is. It's not, this is not the same thing about it. He writes, the best and worst of 2001. It's okay, Dave, go ahead. It's okay, you're listening to the program 25 no. seconds later. No. This is going to confuse your little brain. So no, I'm good. Okay. Because there's a delay going through all the electronics, you know, and you're getting it 20 seconds later. And then by the time it actually registers in the brain, it may be, never mind. Never mind, never mind. He says, uh, Dave Thomas writes, now that's credibility award goes to Arkansas State Representative Jim Holt, who sponsored House Bill 2548, an obvious attempt to get creationism back into schools. Okay. Is that what it was? It was definitely not that. That was all. Here is the bill, word for word. I helped Jim Holt write this bill. Uh, Jim Holt sent it to me, actually, and had me go through it and helped him do a few things, add a few things, delete a few things. There is no mention that I can recall of creation in the bill. This is not a bill to get creation into the schools. Let me read it to you, Dave, since apparently you didn't get a chance to read this. And, uh, you know, this is the bill, okay? Uh, HB 2548 uh, from, what's the date here? Regular session of 2001. It doesn't have an actual date on it. Anyway. It says, by representatives, and it lists a whole bunch of names here who are sponsoring the bill. For an act to be entitled, an act to prohibit state agencies and other public entities from using tax dollars to purchase or distribute material that they know or should have known contains or presents as factual information which has been proven false or fraudulent. And for other purposes, subtitle. An act to prohibit state agencies and other public entities from using tax dollars to purchase or distribute material that they know or should have known contains or presents as factual information which has been proven false or fraudulent. Sounds like a good thing to me. This is a bill to say you can't use tax dollars to buy materials that are going to teach things that have been proven wrong. The bill never mentions creation. It never mentions evolution. This is not an anti-evolution bill. This is not a bill to get creation into the school. I don't know how you can miss that, Dave, okay? But it's only like three pages, okay? Read it. If you can't handle it, call me. I'll read the whole thing for you. It doesn't mention creation. It doesn't mention evolution. So, 
You're misinformed at best, or you're lying at worst, okay? This is not an attempt to get creation into schools, as he says. Is this off his website? Yeah, okay. Um, Holt obtained the testimony of Kent Hoven in hearings on the bill. Many of the HB 2548's statements about fraud in science textbooks can be directly traced to the religious track Big Daddy produced by Jack Chick Tracks. That's right, a comic book. A columnist, Don Michael of Northwest Arkansas Times, wrote, If it isn't troubling to know your representatives voted for a bill to use a comic strip as its source, try visiting Hoven's website. Okay, the fact that a columnist writes something, <laughs> or any columnist can write anything. I mean, take a look at any newspaper. You see this all the time, you know. Uh, so, and this is, they, you're either, again, you're misinformed or you're deliberately lying, okay? Uh, the fact that Jack Chick wrote a comic book about the fraud and lies in the textbooks does not mean that the bill got the facts from the comic book. The fact is, the things mentioned in this bill are lies. They are used in textbooks. Have textbooks well, are true. Are around me. It's the things true. mentioned are true. There are facts. It's a fact that there are lies in the textbooks. Right. Yeah. And the bill, was sim the bill was simply to get the lies out of the textbooks. Don't lie to the kids. Like, don't teach them um, that, um, like this, all, all the language here they've got from all this uh, whereas and everything else. Let's get a section on carbon dating, okay? Uh, don't teach the theory that fossils represent missing links between life forms. It cannot be proven that the fossils had any offspring. That's true. Yeah. It is incorrect to have a textbook say, this fossil proves that it's a missing link or an intermediate between one kind and another because you don't know that that fossil represents an animal that had any kids. All you know is it died. Okay, it left its bones behind. It's got a section on potassium argon dating, rubidium strontium dating, of the different so-called cavemen that have all been proven false, Haeckel's embryos uh, proven false in uh, 1874 by Professor William Hiss. Ernst Haeckel was convicted of fraud for this in 1874. Human embryos never have gills, not even rudimentary gill slits. Take the gill slits out of the book. So Jack Chick wrote a comic book called Big Daddy, and then later he asked me if I would update it. He'd been coming to for years. Uh, no, this is incorrect. It's, it's, uh, it's either totally misinformed or deliberately lying, Dave, to say that the information comes from a, a comic book. The comic book contains some of the same information because they're both right. The bill is right. The comic book is right. I'm right in my seminar. There are things that are used to support evolution that are wrong. We'll talk about this after the break. All right, folks, welcome back to the Creation Science Hour. We are getting the A.O. Williston messages, and we'll take a few of those. And but we want to stay on the Antelope websites as long as we can here. Try to straighten out some of these guys that either can't read or can't think, and we'll help them. From my savior, 1980. Uh, he's wondering about uh, getting in touch with George Norrie, the guy who took over Coast to Coast Art Bell Show. Yes. Uh, it's on very late, I believe at night, is it right? Real Middle late. of the night. Middle of the night. Oh, um, <laughs> evidently, he's looking for people to be on the show, and he wants if people email producer at coasttocoastam.com, then uh, there's a possibility we can get on the air again. That'd be wonderful. I've been on there twice. I'd love to go on again. Uh, producer at what? Producer at Coast to Coast. AM.com. Coast to Coast AM.com. Used to be the Art Bell Show. I think it still is Art Bell Show, but anyway, Art has retired, and George Norrie. Tell him he'd like to have here Kent Hoven on there. I've been on twice. It's on from like midnight to four in the morning. It's crazy. Remember the first time? You were in high school. Oh, yeah. Woke us up in the middle of the night, said, Hey, Eric, cut here. I just gave out the phone numbers, and all the phone lines lit up. <laughs> I talked from one till three in the morning, and I thought, I do a lot of radio programs, and I thought, nobody's listening to this, you know. Tommy Art Bell said, would you like to give out your phone number so people can get your catalog? I said, sure. So I gave out the phone number, and I'm sitting there in the office, and here it is, 3, three in the morning. We got like six lines, and all of them lit up. There's nobody there to answer. <laughs> so we go into it with a break or something. I went and woke up my wife, my daughter, and Eric, and the other son, and I said, get out and answer the phone. And the phone rang incessantly for almost three weeks. Yeah, that was unreal. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you hung it up, bang, rang again, you know. So, so if you'd like to put us through that again, <laughs> send an email, producer, at coasttocoastam.com. Tell them to have Kent Hoven on there, and we'll be happy to do that. Hey, well, that's the message from how in the world, I don't know what in the world the screen name is, but you're wondering about rumors of Darwin becoming a Christian on his deathbed. That has not been confirmed. We've heard that as well. Uh, but there is absolutely no confirmation of that. We don't think you can know that. Some people say, don't teach that. You can't say that's for sure. To be honest, we don't know the truth, do we? Well, you died uh, before I was born, quite a while. Me too. Matter of fact, before anybody <laughs> alive today was born. So... So, we don't know. <coughs> apparently, apparently, 
his wife or somebody made up the rumor about him repenting, but I don't think there's any way to chase that one down for sure now. I don't use the story. Christian in Iowa, thank you for writing in. He's wondering if the seminars that are going to be uh, appearing on Sky Angel are going to be newer than the ones that he's already got on DVD. His are two years old. Oh, yes. We've redone the whole series this year. Uh, Derek, you've been working on the DVDs. They're all redone. New 2003 edition online. Yeah, the grainy ones. Online. The grainy ones. Oh, the grainy oh, ones. Oh, they're a little grainy. Yeah, but you can hear it. And no, you they're can, great. It does a great job of showing So they're going to degraininate them or whatever they do to make them a little better resolution. But then we've got to have a T1 line. We've got to get, get a T1 line stretcher or something, don't we? Make it bigger. <laughs> Just wax it. Just wax it so it goes... <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get a T3 line. You know what we pay for that T1? No, OC3. Is that OC3? OC3? Is that as That's big as you can stuff. get? New York? We don't want it. And it costs more? Uh, I would imagine <laughs> that would cost... We don't have one. We don't want one. Okay, so, Dave, you're saying that I got the information for House Bill 2548 from a comic book. This is incorrect, Okay. Now, the bill was defeated, he says. Let me explain why. I went and testified before the Arkansas House Representatives Committee that was considering this bill. There were 20 representatives. I spoke for 45 minutes. I went through point by point everything in the bill, and I said, folks, this is correct. Mr. Holt is right when he wrote this bill that uh, the following items are fraudulent. And so we went through point by point. When I got all done, an AC, uh, lady, I'm sorry, a woman from the ACLU. Definitely not a lady. Uh, ACLU is the American Communist Lawyers Union. Uh, she got up and said... Uh, this is obviously an anti-evolution bill, which is what somebody else called it on here. Uh, here we go, right here. The anti-evolution bill. There it is. Uh, Dave, or whoever, anybody, there's probably 10, in, 10 websites, the anti hofen sites that have this in there, right? Do they all do? They probably all do. The evolution is not mentioned in this bill. This is not an anti-evolution bill. Matter of fact, the bill itself, you, Jonathan, you just printed this off of an atheist website, didn't you? said, well, ma'am, is it true that these things are proven false? And she got kind of fidgety, and she said, well, yes, but this is an anti-evolution bill. <laughs> he said, ma'am, if the stuff is proven false, take it out of the book. Why would we want to pay for lies in the textbook? The skepticfriends.org, you can print out the bill. And the folks at skepticfriends.org ought to wise up. Read the bill yourself. It's not an anti-evolution bill. It's an anti-lie bill. Okay, so don't lie to the kids. And if you're still supporting a lie to support your theory, wise up. You've been fooled. Okay, the Bible says the Satan is the father of lies. And he's laughing at you for believing it. Anyway, after the ACLU uh, got done testifying for, uh, struggling through their testimony for like 15 minutes, they went out and got several other ACLU lawyers. And they went around, and for the next three days, before the bill came for a vote, they lobbied those congressmen so hard, 12 of them were scared to vote. They knew the bill was right, they knew it was the right thing to do, but they were scared to vote, so they took a walk. And the bill missed passing by six votes. Yeah. They made it sound like, you know, oh, I did fail the first time, and it made it sound like it was a really bad bill, a really stupid bill. That was a great bill. They made it about two or six votes. They took a walk. And you ought to find out who your representatives were that chose to take a walk. And they're more scared of the ACLU than doing what's right. And they ought to get a new job to compete this or change the tires and get a representative in there. And that's some backbone. It doesn't care what anybody thinks. So I'm going to do what's right. That's wrong. This no. be a different world. That would be a different world. world. If congressmen representatives had that attitude, I'm going to do what's right. We need some statesmen, not politicians. Mm -hmm. Politics. You know what politics is? Mm -hmm. Poly means many. And a tick is a blood-sucking animal. So when you get many blood-sucking animals together, that's politics. Okay? Okay. Not a preach, brother. Okay. Here we are. Uh, this uh, uh, was on page four here. Okay. The anti-evolution bill. In March 2001, Representative uh, Jim Holt of Arkansas introduced an anti-evolution bill, HB 2548. Didn't we just discuss it? We just did. I'm just pointing out, this is another website that's saying it's an anti-evolution bill. You need to fix this, guys. It's not an anti-evolution bill. It's an anti-lie bill. Okay? Word. 
Earth. Kent Holt invited his good friend, Dr. Kent Holt, known as Dr. Dino, a young Earth creationist from Pensacola, Florida, to help him draft this bill and give testimony to his fellow House members. Holt was later criticized for this in a blistering editorial in the Northwest Arkansas Times because none of the legislators in the House bothered to check on Dr. Dino's wacky, mad cat credentials beforehand. Okay. Uh, I don't know who, which website this is from, but uh, <laughs> they, they, they're missing the whole point. Okay, I do have a doctor's degree from an unaccredited university. I've said that many times. And if you don't like it, fine. Call me Kent, call me Bubba, call me Hey You. But the fact that somebody writes a blistering editorial means nothing. There are blistering editorials written about everybody that's ever tried to do anything, good or bad, okay? There are blistering editorials against Ronald Reagan and against Bill Clinton. And against, well, maybe not Bill Clinton. The media loves Bill Clinton. Uh, but uh, I'm sure there are blistering editorials. But the fact that there's an editorial written by somebody, so, uh, duh, that's not proof of anything, okay? You need to wise up. Get that off your website. Here we go. Uh, from home.comtext, C-O-M-C-I-S-T dot net, slash, Tildy, and then F. Steiger, letter F, and then S T E I G E R slash Ken Hovind. Okay. <clears throat> Hovind, this is a sarcastic remark after attending one of my seminars. Hovind has discovered a cure for cancer. A vitamin B17 deficiency causes cancer, just like vitamin C deficiency causes scurvy. Taking B17 plus C will cure your cancer. See canceranswer.com or worldwithoutcancer.com. Well, he meant this to be sarcastic, but I didn't discover a cure for cancer. God told us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, eat the fruit, the vegetables, and the seeds. Yeah. The seeds contain vitamin B17. Your sister, my daughter, has a husband named Paul who was given a, a, a very serious cancer just a year ago. Took a bunch of vitamin B17 and a whole bunch of other vitamins and chemotherapy, decided to go that way, and is absolutely perfectly fine. Yeah. He's back up to 220. He's back up to his original weight. <laughs> Uh, he's six foot two, six foot two, excellent shape, and uh, he runs our shipping department here. So it works, okay? You can go to uh, apricotsfromgod.com and see many testimonies there of people who've been cured by taking vitamin B17. So, yes, I didn't discover the cure, though. You got this wrong on your website. Here, Hovind says, the whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead, because white bread lacks vitamin E and lecithin. True, I guilty. I do say that. Some in our part two, if you'd like to watch that. It's not that the bread kills you. It's that what you're not getting that kills you. You get heart problems, circulatory problems from lack of vitamin E, less than an omega-3 fatty acids. That is a biological fact. If you run your car low on oil, you will have problems with it. Okay? The uh, main bearings will seize up, the rod bearings will seize up, and uh, distance will seize to the cylinder walls. And there are all kinds of bad problems you don't want through your engine, I would hope. And if you run your body low on vitamins, different things happen. There are 16 vitamins, 3 oils, and 60 minerals your body needs, just a little bit of, every single day. If you don't give them something, goes up. This is sarcastic remark number three. Hope that Adam and Eve are, are vegetarians, which is one reason why they live so long, 900 plus years. Guilty. I say that, and I agree. I think there's probably one. I I'm not a vegetarian. You don't have to be a vegetarian. But the Bible does say they were vegetarians in Genesis chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, number four. Hope that uh, sarcastic remark Pick stones from Peru show clear drawings of dinosaurs indicating that man and dinosaurs lived together. Do we have the Ica stones? We had them the other day. We took them back to the museum. They were in the museum. Okay, they're still in the museum. We have four of the Ica stones. Dennis Swift from Beaverton, Oregon, has been to Peru many times and has studied the Ica stones more than anybody I know. And he's coming to speak at our conference. You can contact him. How about if you have Dennis Swift? He's uh, linked on our website. Um, Dennis Swift. He's in Beaverton, Oregon. He pastors a Nazarene church there. We're working on that. We're going to go back to sports our work. But, uh, I talked to him yesterday, as a matter of fact, for quite a while. Uh, and he's been having, he, I'm, I'm going to speak at his, Southeast Cre his Northwest Creation Conference in, in February. If you live up in the Portland area, come on over to that conference. I'll be there for that. Uh, Lord willing. So, yes, I, I, I agree. I'm guilty. The Inca Stones in Peru show dinosaurs of dinosaurs and people living together. I'm guilty of that one. Number four. Okay. In ancient literature, they were called dragons. Uh, they were actually dinosaurs. The way they killed the dragons and the T-Rex was to pull off their arm and let them bleed to death. He says, I would like to see Ken Hovind try to pull the arm off a T-Rex. I got a misspelling in here, by the way. Whoever did this one say, pull the arm off a T-Rex. Uh, um, when I do it, I say, I say that the Bill of Story says, that he pulled off the arm and the creature bled to death. And then I show a picture of the Babylonian cylinder seal when somebody is pulling the arm off a dragon. 
It's a Babylonian seven to seal copy from 600 BC. So that's actually in historical facts. The Beowulf story does say that. The Babylonian seven to seal does show that. That's the big deal. I don't know if that's how they did it or not. I, I've never done it. And, uh, but I do something to teach that story of facts about the ancient literature. Number six. The last dimension of the Bible is all within dragon. I agree. I'm guilty. I teach that. Some of part well. The Green Series takes. I was on a puppy at a moon pool, and it was 12 anchors to hold it down. Noah was 12 feet tall. Noah's Ark was located in the Dolopinar site of Turkey, just as the Hawaii, who has a ribbons from it. I don't recall God telling Noah to use ribbons. But they must have been better than the ones on the Titanic. Well, it's interesting, you know, the Titanic was built by professionals, and the Ark was built by amateurs. I think that here. <laughs> Without a building permit, I'm going to think, why? Think about that. Mm-hmm. It would have taken 400 years to build it with a building permit. Okay, uh, I'm going to start with that. I'm going to cross that off, Roger. Okay, number eight. We should not have public schools. Oh, uh, boy. What I say in the seminar, you have to be careful with the word that's kind of like you just barely change it a little bit. I'm very careful when I speak on this. I do not say we should not have public schools. I say the, I say the question to consider is should we have public schools? Right. My brothers in this study, fourth year teaching public school, are they wrong? Some of them are wrong. Great Christian loves the Lord, don't be to the Lord. Uh, big guy, great teacher. It's all kinds of awards, be the best teacher ever, everything. My mother taught for years, retired from teaching public school. There are many good teachers. Dan's best up there, Dan's fun. He was a public school principal for I guess part of the program. I've been going 16 years. Sometimes he was just teaching, sometimes he was an administrator, but the dad works here, called Dan Woods, and I ministered there. There are many good daddy teachers that love the Lord that work in the public school system. So, but still, I think, it, and I mentioned in the seminar from a constitutional perspective, the federal government should not be involved in education whatsoever. They're not afraid to start their involvement. That's different than saying that we should not have public schools. I just simply said, maybe we should ask the question, should we have public school? Next time we start thinking about that. Okay. Uh, never mind. Darwin has been disproved, and Darwin disproved that time. Let me tell you the story on this one. I went into a seminar, I think it was Philadelphia. I don't remember where. I was big alive, but this guy walks in and said, hey, go ahead, and have you seen the website, DarwinDisproved.com? I said, no. He said, you ought to check it out. It shows, they just found these fossils, and it proves that, you know, uh, man and dinosaurs were together, and Darwin has been disproved. I said, oh, that's interesting. So that night, I'm speaking on a seminar, and a cute question answer period, I believe it was, came up, and somebody said, uh, what about Darwin? I forgot what the question was, anyway. And I said, well, I was just handed this note. They said, there's a new website called DarwinDisproved.com. And is that still in there? I think it still is in there. Darwin, just check that out, Darwin, see if you can do it. I said, it makes it best, because that's the end. I said, yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, and that's my wrong one. It moved. Okay. If you're looking for that race, I can't hold it. It's like, hey, this is the new Mexican stuff. Okay. Hot news of the week for December 12th. I've been there again. Mm-hmm. Well, they part of the program or out there. I come to New Mexico and debate all the professors with half my brain time but I'm about on two conditions. I get half the time and we talk about one topic at a time. Simple. Okay. So, uh, I mentioned that night that somebody like this was just handed this note saying Darwin just proved that time is a website you should check out. End of story. This started blasting me because the, the Darwin Disproved that time is a joke website to make fun of creationists. It shows uh, a fossil of a dinosaur just about to bite a human and they're both fossilized or something, if I recall. I have never seen the site. They just was handing me this note back honey. I mean, they did it as a setup so that they could, you know, make another anti Hollywood website. <laughs> anyway, so I did mention it. Never mentioned it again. Mentioned it one time. And though still, on the internet, uh, I would guess four or five years later, saying that I was taken in by an April Fool's joke. Dave, you're mistaken. I wasn't taken in by the joke. I simply said, I was handed this note. This is a website to go check out. I didn't know this was it. <laughs> Some 12 years ago on Top of I don't think you can hear you on my Jonathan. They're so desperate, you know. The, uh, anything Jesus said, they would use it for years and years, you know, and, and twist it. And Satan even twisted Jesus' words. Okay, we're about two minutes here. I'm going to read that one article. I look over these other ones here. 
Welcome back to the Creation Science Center. This is the final segment of Space Show. a question about the giant sloth in China. Yeah, giant sloth. Let's see, you're all bound there for Right, so I've got a giant sloth that must be alive in China. I'm going to give you a clear hit and reach my sloth. They say they shot it with a high-powered rifle, and they can't bring it down. They can't kill it. The scientist says that they're looking at an example of its fur, which rocks and other things stuck in its fur, so it makes it bulletproof. True that sloths get all kinds of stuff in their food. Sloths apparently are not real bright, okay? And they even turn green sometimes from mold on their food. They don't shower too often, but they smell like an understand. As far as the giant sloth, I've not heard of the one in China. I have heard of them in uh, the Baltic or South America called Patagonia. In fact, when I, I believe it was even Darwin, or when some of the explorers went around to the tip of South America, they stopped in Patagonia. And it might be a reason why I went to the Middle East, asking for that. So I said, I believe I don't remember. I'm really sure. But uh, some of the explorers stopped there in the 1800s, and the natives had actual giant fur uh, like capes they would wear in the coal uh, made out of the giant sloth. And they said, oh, yeah, some of the animals are still alive. They were raised in caves like they would uh, bears or something, you know, you know animals, cows. Uh, so they're fur. So there are many stories from the 1800s, or none in this century that I'm aware of. This will be the first one that I've on the note. If, uh, if there is a family more about it, I've not heard of it. If you want to hear us and message us, go to DrNinoLive.com or DrNinoLive, first name name. You go to DrNinoLive.com as our spread site. Or you can call that, by the way. The phone system is working. Secretaries are trying to get their Christmas uh, packages ordered and out as quick as possible. But you can start to call that if you'd like. 850-479-DINO or 877-479-DINO if you're in the U.S. One more day, we'll go back to the website. I'm nice to see you in 1998. I'm going to have a question for you today. This is the only event that fills out the question. Two of the goddess of those dragons live with men and may have been used for everyday living. Uh, you even show the stones which show different kinds of dinosaurs. There were no markets. Why can't they be put past the mental block and say we might be wrong? Well, the first question is why can't the evolutionists say we might be wrong about the dinosaurs? answer? Well, you can't just say, okay, evolution's wrong. Because then you're left with a void. Well, how did we get here? The only other option is somebody created the world. And you can't just start accepting the creation story because that brings along some baggage. See, if the, if the creation story is true, there was a creator. If there's a creator, there might be some rules. That's what they're running from. They don't like there might be a guy telling them what to do. So the question here is, uh, is it not from our second 1980? Is it possible that they would use the dinosaurs and other animals to help build the ark? Uh, possible. No, no. Dinosaurs, most reptiles are not real bright. Uh, it's pretty hard to find a reptile to do much of anything. Okay. Uh, they may have had uh, great strength and been able to do something, but uh, how to train a dinosaur, I don't know. All right. Uh, then, now we do have one on our, on our climbing wall, for the dinosaurs building. So that's great. Then uh, I heard once that the ark was an example of Christ. Uh, it, it would have three levels to it, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And most people only look uh, that it says that God told Noah to get in the ark, so God was on the ark. And it always said, come into the ark. He didn't say, go into the ark. He said, come later at the end of the day, he said, go out of the ark. He was in the ark, the type of Christ. I think that's probably true. Uh, there's many typologies in the Bible, but you have to be careful. You can get carried away on that subject and you know, see the typology and everything. You know. okay, a couple more of the sarcastic comments about Ken Hogan Seminar. I found one home.com, cast home.comcast.net, slash Toby, F. Stander, slash Ken Hogan. One of the nearly 1,000 anti-Hogan websites that uh, we've decided to answer a few. 
So they see those uh, Pippin says a heavy rate chamber can kill you in great giants like the Fort Lewis flood, where there were two times the oxygen and pressure. This is indirect, okay? I do think hyperbrakes have a great healing potential, and, and with thousands of people involved in hyperbrake treatments right now, hyperbrake chambers all over the country. There's a big one in Pensacola, Florida. The babies use them for years to heal. So they should go down and get those skin divers, should go down and get the veins. You can go to uh, hyperbrake.com. Jonathan, there's a whole list on our website of links about the uh, hyperbrakes. Yeah, go there. Dr. 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 I think we are, I say this in my seminar, I think we are genetically inferior. And if I give you 500 chihuahuas and say, hey, I want you to cross breed these until you get a great thing, I can help. The genes are gone. For goodness. By the time you get a chihuahua, after all these generations of you know, raising chihuahuas, there's a lot of stuff gone out of the gene pool. Chihuahuas are swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool. <laughs> they spend all that time to produce a dog that is 100% useless. And I'm telling you, but that's okay. You're good. Somebody said, what do you think about UFOs? 
I gave four different books by, let's see, they were some place, let me find it. Uh, four shots of books, ever. I mentioned that Stan Dale wrote a book on uh, UFO and Sandy, it's been on a bunch of many times. And many people have written books about UFO, and they say they're sort of conclusions. One is the top secret government experiments, nobody knows about it yet. Two is the obvious, most obvious one is they're misidentified, they saw whether the one was not there, so too much not given out before they were there. <laughs> Three is that they're demonic. And I just say, I don't know what they are. These are the theories. If they're demonic, then it could be demons or Satan is using this as a means of transportation because they can't be more than one place at a time, whereas God is all places at all times. So, now, I do not say the devil goes to UFO. I do say I don't know what they are, and these are the theories. That's what the way it's supposed to work. But the, uh, we're not going to get all through. Well, that's what I'm going to do a few more. Four minutes already. Uh, another thing I really meant to do is wrong because we were on different dates and I cover all this. Uh, I agree, we don't think that the dating is wildly wrong. So that's another part. So, light is slowing down. Uh, so much for E equals MC squared. He writes in here, there's no scientific evidence to support this contention. See creation of speed of light or death number or whatever. But there is plenty to support the speed of light. Matter of fact, there's a book. Uh, I think I would never do it. It looks like uh, uh, by, what's his name? This came out recently. And I went there, huh? Yes, there is much evidence that the speed of light is changing and has changed over history. And uh, there's a Discover magazine, uh, when was it? Uh, April 2002. Maybe it was September 2003. Yeah. I don't know if anybody was on the wrong for Discover magazine in September 2003, I think. Or probably Indians, too, have to put some of that. 